hi everybody welcome back to my channel oh boy are you ready for this I got a very interesting comment today can't wait to share it with you I'm gonna keep it real right now this is something that my family and only my best friends know about me but when I'm feeling off I turn to spending money. It is my stress coping mechanism. I try not to stress mostly. Every once in a while though something will get to me. Maybe sometimes it's a hormone thing if you know what I mean. Sometimes I just don't have patience. Sometimes I just don't have patience to deal with people's quirks and I kind of lose it a little bit. Mm, those of you who have known me over the course of the channel, it's been about, oof, gosh, it's it's been about 16 months since I started my channel. Um, you probably haven't seen that, but uh, it's what I do. So, I had uh, got a, <sighs> this wasn't going to be about this, this was going to be about a haul, but I got a message today that I declined because it was through Messenger, and it was a man's name. Now, in full disclosure, ma Messenger comes through Facebook, and I'm in such a habit of just deleting men that I don't know who send me friend requests because I am in a committed marriage that I don't think that I should just be making friends with men. Like I've had people start the words with friends games with me and then start, you know, like it's just when you when you just select somebody automatically they, you know, pair you up with somebody who's got like your skill level. And then men have had to try, you know, tried to start friendships and stuff with me and I'm not really trying to say that I'm mean about it or whatever, but I um, I don't know that that's appropriate for a married woman, so I don't usually accept friend requests from men. So if any of you share a Facebook with your husband and it's under your husband's name and have tried to send me a friend request and got denied, I am sorry about that. What you can do is you can send me a private message through Messenger and then I will extend the friend request to you. But I just wanted to let you guys know that. I didn't know... Uh, if I, if you're using a man's name, um, or if you're a man who's a subscriber who legitimately wanted to, um, be like subscribed to, um, I'm sorry, wanted to friend me on Facebook for channel purposes, then I'm sorry. Just put, send me a message in Messenger that says you are a fan of the YouTube channel and you wanted to, um, friend request. So I will know to accept it. Um, the same thing with, um... Well, I, I, anybody who follows me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. You don't need to be a friend of mine. So, um, but anyway, I got a message today and it was just somebody else stating their opinions about my life and what I should not be spending my money on and what I should be eating and what I should be doing with my body and with my life. And I appreciate when it comes from love. I do. My sister Julie is a proponent of diet and exercise and we talk about it a lot. She wishes that I was healthier. Uh, she doesn't like to see that I'm in pain and she doesn't like to see that if I'm not taking care of myself when I'm not taking care of myself. But in full disclosure, I am, uh, I'm, I'm a, what's the word? I'm a self-proclaimed addict of carbohydrates and my carbohydrate of choice is sweets. Uh, I try to still be mindful of my blood sugar. I don't partake in any white. Uh, I do have biscuits about twice a month. We'll have biscuits. Um, I don't eat potatoes unless they're sweet potatoes and even them not that much. I about twice a year I want potato chips. Um, 
it's that time of the month. I don't know why. I just get this weird cravings for potato chips. But even growing up, I wasn't a potato chip eater. I much rather have Doritos or tortillas, or uh, tortillas, <laughs> tostitos, than and pretzels uh, than potato chips. And even pretzels now, I don't partake in as much because they are just pure carbs. There's no protein really, hardly any protein in them. Um, but I really try to do the very best that I can. Um, I try to eat the most balanced diabetic diet that I can while, without feeling like I am denying myself because I have been on a diet since I'm 11. I really was put on my first diet when I was 11 years old and have you know, I know my body and I know that when I'm on a diet, I don't succeed. I have to make these life changing, altering things like when I found out I had type two diabetes and how much I had, that had to change my life and my eating habits. When we were going up, we just ate like pasta three times a week because it was the most bang for your buck to feed your family sandwiches and pasta and cereal you know that's like all carbohydrates that I don't partake in anymore um, just to show you that my my dinner which I'm shooting this video at 12:30 at night but you guys know I stay up till 4 till at least till Jim comes home so this is like my, my dinner hour my dinner tonight is cheese slices and turkey cold cuts with no bread I'm not having a sandwich I'm just gonna have roll-ups so I, I I know my body, I know what I should be eating, I know what I do eat, I don't fool myself for a second. Do I know that I could be eating better? Yes, 100%. My sister is doing a keto diet. She gave up carbohydrates for Lent and she has had so much success with it that I've like been really researching do I can do I want to do a keto diet but I have to be honest with you I don't think I would be successful with it I don't I, I'm not trying to fool myself and I'm not trying to quit before I start kind of thing but I'm 47 and three quarters years old I know me um, I've made lots of life-altering changes that I know that I stuck to but just giving up carbohydrates, I don't see me doing it. You know, I am way, I eat way better than I ever did. Um, but the problem that I have now is the arthritis. And what I have told everybody before is self-diagnosed fibromyalgia. Um, I cannot find a doctor to tell me that it's fibromyalgia. They all want to tell me it's diabetic neuropathy. The, the symptoms that I have, but I have other symptoms that are not diabetic neur neuropathy, but that's beside the point. Um, I, I'm in pain a lot and I know now, like, especially if I, uh, with the, with the, what I think is fibromyalgia, I know that I have to lay off the artificial sweeteners, which sucks because I'm a diabetic. Excuse me for saying it sucks, but <laughs> because I'm a diabetic, I can't have sugar, obviously. So now there is, again, the rare occasion, like if I go to the movies, I will get a diet soda, because I like diet soda with the popcorn at the movies. If we go to Sonic for happy hour, I will get a Route 44 Blackberry Coke Zero, but that's like once every three months. That's not even something that often we do. Um... But I'm trying not to drink any more artificial sweeteners. The only thing that I do is I have two cups of coffee with creamer in the morning. It's either or a sugar-free sweet cream, like a sugar-free creamer, or it's Splenda and um, half and half. Um, because I find that it really does affect my how I feel. Like if I drink that Root 44 Blackberry Coke Zero and then something else like two two days in a row I will feel like so worse the third day and that's just me that's not everybody that's not how everybody's body works my sister Alicia who is a type 2 diabetic with me along the way she can eat potatoes and can't eat corn I can eat corn and I can't eat potatoes so everybody's body's different listen to your bodies you know but 
That wasn't going to be about this. This video wasn't going to be about this. So if you say it to me out of concern, if you're concerned and say, look, I love you, I love your channel, I'd love for you to be on the air for the next 30 years, I want you to take care of yourself, these are some tips that may work for you. I appreciate that. I, a lot of you have given me advice that I've taken, and a lot of you have given me advice that I've listened to, whether or not I've taken it or not, whether or not I've followed your advice. I appreciate it when it comes from love. I do. Um... One of the things I talk about with Jim all the time is it's the subtleties of language. You know, I've been, when you work with people with developmental disabilities, the subtleties of language is something that you learn right away. Because these are individual, these are individuals that have, sometimes have intellectual disabilities that also sometimes have behavioral problems that don't want to be told what to do, but you still have to give them guidance and direction. So you have to be able to gently tell somebody, this is what we need to have happen, is a nice way of saying, I need you to do this, without telling them you have to do this. So it's just, it's just subtleties of language. We talk about it all the time. But human nature is to react to the subtleties of language. You know, if you tell somebody, I'm concerned for your health, that I wish you could be healthier, as opposed to you eat like crap and that's why you don't feel good. No, no, I don't feel good because I have arthritis. My, my 120 pound grandmother had arthritis. My, my sister who is, eats healthier than any person that I've ever imagined whose weight has been like up and down because of her arthritis. No, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I appreciate what you're saying. And yes, maybe if I lost weight, the arthritis wouldn't hurt as much. But I have skinny people in my family who have the same thing. And I have people in my family who eat organic, gluten-free diets and still have the same thing, still have the pain that comes with it. So I appreciate what you're saying. But you have to remember that I've said this before. Not every person on this planet is the same. You know, when I had my knee surgery... I, I think it's a funny story, but when I had my knee surgery, I was in the hospital. I was assistant manager at the group home at the time. And everybody came in and sized me up and said, oh, you're having knee replacement surgery. And I was like, no, I'm not. I have an injury from doing something athletic. I was dancing at a Christian rock concert and I tore my meniscus, which had probably been deteriorating over the years of being a catcher in softball. I have always been overweight, but I've always been athletic. You know, people, I'm the kind of girl that was out on the dance floor busting my butt while people would come up to me and be like, I can't, I'm so impressed by you, girl. Oh, that's fine. You're, I appreciate that. But I'm that kind of person. So for you to judge me based on what you know about me from 15 minute intervals over the course of 16 months, is kind of ballsy. Just saying. Um, when you see all the food that I haul, I know my family eats terribly. I try so hard. I when I make a steamed bag of broccoli for dinner, mom will have one piece of broccoli and put a stick of like a tab of a stick, a slab of butter on it. Jim will have three stalks of broccoli. I try so hard to get my family to eat better. I, it's like it's like pulling teeth, and then I eat the rest of the broccoli. Um. I know. I'm not, you're you're preaching, babe. You're preaching. I can't get Jim to switch to anything but Mountain Dew. When he lived in New York, he used to drink pineapple soda and Mountain Dew. Now the sugar in the pineapple soda is not any better than the sugar in the Mountain Dew, but it's the caffeine and the colors in the Mountain Dew that's also not good for him. Um, but here I can't get him to drink anything else. Now he started to drink green tea again. Sometimes he drinks juice. But he has to watch his triglycerides and he has to watch his cholesterol and that comes from drinking stuff that he shouldn't be drinking and eating stuff he shouldn't be eating. So I understand when you tell me, stop buying the crap for my family. And one thing you also don't know that I will share with you is probably we shop at Walmart twice a month sometimes or sometimes only once a month. We do monthly shopping and then sometimes we'll supplement it. Almost every time that we go to Walmart, I'm not in Walmart. Across from Walmart is the Dollar Tree. So I usually drop them at Walmart, I go to the Dollar Tree, and then by the time I'm done with the Dollar Tree, I'm ready to pick them up. Every once in a while, they're not done and I can meet them in the store. 
but that is a very rare occasion very rare occasion so I give them my list I go to shop and I hope that they get what they're supposed to get and not anything extras but this is America if they want to eat like crap they're not asking you to take care of them I'm not asking you to take care of me I'm not I'm gonna take care of myself I'll take care of Jim Jim take care of me I had an epiphany the other day when we went shopping this week I actually did go into the Walmart with them mom's back was killing her Jim's back was killing him and I realized that after the Dollar Tree and Walmart and Aldi that I was capable of taking care of them when they I think that that will the future will be I said for the last two years I didn't feel like I was gonna be that way when I was younger growing up I just knew I was gonna be the 75 year old fat lady that took care of everybody but the last two years I really wasn't sure that that was gonna pan out but I noticed the other day that that is something that I'm gonna be able to do I'll have adrenaline pushes and then I'll have to rest for a couple of days but I still know that I can get through it and I can do it so kudos to me <laughs> But um, the other thing that I want to address is my finances. So I wanted to just go over, because the person who commented me today mentioned my finances as well. I often say that I can't afford something or I, I don't have money for something. And I know a couple of months ago I went on to the channel and I told you guys that I would probably be doing less hauls and less DIYs because the YouTube... Um, money wasn't what it was had, had, had reduced I'm gonna tell this story again and I'm sorry if it sounds like a broken record to you if you've heard it before if you actually are one of these people that listens <laughs> I did not come on here asking anybody for any money when I told everybody that that was the situation to look out that I probably would do less of these it was to let people know that I will do less of these whenever I do a DIY I get at least three comments that say keep the DIYs coming so I felt it necessary to say the DIYs are going to slow down, and this is why. I wasn't making excuses. I was letting you know. I feel like we're family. I'm, I call you guys my family, and that's how I feel. People had reached out to me. How could they help? I don't know. I didn't know how they could help. So I went and researched how could people help, and I saw that there is something called Patreon. I saw that there was something called Super Chat. I saw that some people have... Um, uh, PayPal accounts set up. Some people do Etsy shops. Some people um, sell their wares. Some people have stores and um, they sell things online. I j looked at all these things. Well, I don't have any capital to start an online business. If I don't even have the money to go to the Dollar Tree to buy supplies, I definitely don't have the capital to start the online business. So this is what I found out. I found out you could do Patreon, and I found out that you could do Super Chat. So you asked, not you, all of you, obviously, but some of you asked, and I answered. And then I got a lot of heat for it, which I didn't care, because the people who, I say all the time, the people who care won't mind, and the people who mind don't care. Um, no, it's matter. The people who, <laughs> the people who care, for the people who care, it won't matter. And to the people who matter, they won't care. That's what it is. Um, but I did take, you know, there was a lot of negative feedback about it. And I heard some horrible stories about people who, you know, I, I, the night of the live stream where we did Super Chat, I got a comment the next day from a lady who said, I said I had just sat down after making a roast pork dinner. And she said, roast pork, you're complaining, you have no money. Roast pork, I ate tuna fish for dinner. Well, sorry, ma'am. That's first first thing. The second thing is, here, I don't know what kind of tuna fish you're eating, but the roast pork was 99 cents a pound. And for $4, I got four pounds, and it will feed the three of us two meals. So I got six meals out of $4 worth of roast pork. I can't get a six pack of tuna for four dollars anywhere here um, so I appreciate what you're saying I do because we grew up on hot dogs and macaroni and cheese because we didn't have any money but that being said I 
It's not a comparison. It's not a comparison game. I, I, I was lucky enough to have, I shop, I look online, I look at my gro local grocery stores, I find sales and stuff. And then I manage that money well. And, and it's not all the time that I don't have money. As you'll see from the Dollar Tree haul that I'm going to haul here, this has been a good week. Um, Jim worked really hard this week. He got a little bit of a raise in one of his jobs and we were able to um, treat ourselves treat ourselves to get some supplies and stuff and a couple of things that were on my wish list. So that being said, that being said, it's really none of anybody's business. I I appreciate everything that you guys have done for us and you give us and I love all of you, even the one even the people who are haters, you know. I just think that the difference between, oh, I want to tell you too, the difference I feel, the difference between a hater and tough love is just in the approach, okay? Tough love, again, is that I care about you and I'm concerned and I think that these things will help you. A hater is somebody who just like right out, flat out tells you this is what's wrong with your life. No. Get a mirror. Find out what's wrong with your life before you go ahead and tell me what's wrong with mine, okay? Um, and the other thing is, um, I didn't ask. <laughs> That's sort of a big thing. Um, I ask you guys a lot of stuff. I ask you guys your opinion about stuff. I asked you guys about the Patreon and the donations and stuff. So when I got the feedback from that channel, that wasn't all positive, but I appreciated the feedback. I think I told everybody I appreciate their feedback, their input. Um, but there are, I don't ask, I didn't ask anybody about, you think I'm buying crap that I shouldn't be eating or you think I should feed my family better. I didn't ask anybody that because I know, I mean, there's stuff that, you know, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. I know. Trust me. Louis Anderson said it in a thing. You know, when somebody called him fat, he's like, you woke up one morning like, oh no, I know I've been, I was a fat child. I was a fat baby. I was a fat child. I was a fat toddler. I was a fat teenager. I was a fat adult. I've been fat my whole life. I don't know what it's like to be thin. I never had a thin day in my whole life. Okay, so you're not telling me something new. Okay, and I'm proud of who I am. You know what? There are like 90 skinny people in my graduating class and people remember me. Anyway, I'm just kidding. That being said, um, I hope I didn't offend anybody with this rant. I hope that... Um, you all understand where I'm coming from a little bit better now. I usually say everything with like smiles and today too, I just wanted to clarify. I wanted to clear the air over some stuff. Um, I don't let the haters keep me down. Um, they do make me reevaluate <laughs> you guys. Um, no, they make me, they don't make me, they don't affect my life. They just affect the life that I put out there. And, and people think because I have a YouTube channel that they have the right to my life. Well, first of all, the YouTube channel is just 15 minutes a day of my life, roughly, give or take. Sometimes it's 29, sometimes it's eight. Um, and I didn't ask anybody. Like when I, when I don't ask your opinion, I don't want, you know, I don't, your opinion's okay but don't expect me to take your opinion you know does that make sense if I asked you guys what's wrong with my life and you told me I wouldn't get upset but I didn't ask I don't I didn't ask this guy who he was whatever he was if he was even a guy I don't even know people make up own their own names and stuff so I didn't ask this guy about to, to give me his input on my life and because I have a YouTube channel it doesn't open me up for criticism why should it open me up for criticism why why should anybody in the United States of America, in this free world that we live in, be entitled to tell anybody else in this free world how to live their life? And I'm not talking about paying taxes and helping people with medical expenses. That's a whole nother ball game. I mean, why? Why should? Why should you tell people in this world who they should sleep with or couldn't sleep with or who they should be friends with or not friends with or who they should tolerate as neighbors or not tolerate as neighbors or whatever, whatever. Who, who are we to tell anybody anything? I was raised Catholic, so I used to say all the time, there was only one perfect man who walked on this planet and he fell three times. Now, if you're not Catholic and you don't know the story, we grow up in the Catholic church 
with the story that when Jesus was carrying his cross, he fell three times and got helped. That's my analogy. That one perfect person that walks on this planet fell three times. So who is anybody else to point a finger? That being said, go ahead, talk to me. I'll listen. <laughs> Oh, so I hope you really liked this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Um, I know you guys are going to give me so much love in the comments. And it's it's appreciated, but it's not necessary. Because <laughs> um, I know that you love me. It's just, this video was just to give you a little inside to what's going on um, here in, in Missouri. <laughs> um, so... If you haven't yet, click subscribe, join the family. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And I want to tell you guys something. I know who the subscribers are. I have a list. As the person who's the channel, who owns the channel, I have a list of everybody who subscribed to my channel. If you're going to get on my channel and give me all kinds of crap about how I should live my life, at least subscribe first. Come on. Get me towards that silver button. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.